Welcome in Christ. I invite you to turn to your bulletin for our opening hymn. It's on page three, and I invite you to stand. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Let us pray. Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. first reading for today comes from Isaiah chapter 62, beginning with verse 1. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Word of God, 
word of life. Please read responsibly with me Psalm 36, beginning with verse 5. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. How priceless is your love, O God! All people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed to, lead, to be led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by the one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jar, water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated, and um, Sandy will come forward for the children's sermon, and I invite children to remain in their seats here or at home. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Well, how many of you have ever been to a wedding? You guys ever been to a wedding? Yeah. Did you attend the reception afterwards? Yeah. That's where you know where they cut the cake. Sometimes they open the gifts and that stuff. Well, wedding receptions sometimes are like really big parties. Everyone is happy. And there's usually plenty of cake and food and drink at a wedding reception. 
Can you imagine if you attended a wedding reception and they ran out of things to drink? I don't know, that wouldn't be good. Yeah, that might, it would be difficult. It, I've never been to one that that's happened, though. So, well, it did happen one time at a wedding reception, and Jesus was there. Jesus was invited to this wedding party, and everybody there was happy and having a good time, and they ate lots of food and drank lots of wine. But just when everybody was beginning to have a really good time, they ran out of wine. And, you know, that party was going to be over soon. So when Jesus' mother, when she saw that trouble, she asked Jesus to do something. And Jesus saw these six great big jars that people used to wash themselves. He told the workers to fill them all with water. And when they did, Jesus told them to take some of it and serve it to the guests. The workers thought, well, we can't serve water when we should be serving wine. But they did, as they were told. And the water in the jars, they were all filled with wine. Jesus had performed his very first miracle. And here's what I want you to remember about this story. First, Jesus didn't turn this water into wine as a magic trick. He was not a magician. magician. That was not a magic trick. We know who he was. He was God's son. And that's why Jesus turned water into wine. He wanted to show people who he was. So the next time you go to a wedding reception, remember what Jesus did at the wedding in Cana. He provided a miracle so that people would know who he was. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, we just thank you so much for all of the miracles. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm glad the sun's out today because when you go outside, it's colder than it looks. So today, I would like to talk about how the Holy Spirit sends us forth to serve God and neighbors near and far, how Christ compels us to be witnesses to the gospel, and how God calls us to work together for the common good of all creation. The Apostle Paul writes, as Marilyn read earlier, Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For the common good. We are all given gifts not just for ourselves, but for the common good. When my son ran cross-country years ago, on the back of one of the team's t-shirts, it had a quote from a famous long-distance runner from the 1970s. The quote is, To not use the gift is to waste it. I also add that we need to have a good balance of Sabbath-keeping and self-care as we share our God-given gifts for the common good. We are all given gifts and abilities and times and talents, not for ourselves, but for the common good. We each have many vocations. Vocation is about anything that we do in different aspects of our life. We have several of them, like being a parent or a child. I get to be both of those. Or a baptismal sponsor or congregational leader. And your vocations include what you do at work or school, in leisure or in retirement. Martin Luther teaches that what each of us does in all of our various earthly vocations is just as important as to what someone else does. We are all to contribute to the welfare of all the people with our vocations. Now, 
Martin Luther King Jr. from over 50 years ago did seek the common good for all people regardless of race and, and he's remembered tomorrow. But today, just to clarify, I'm referring to Martin Luther who was the monk who, and priest over 500 years ago. Martin Luther writes that the prince or king in his day did not hold a more important job than did, say, the shoe cobbler or the person who sweeps the city streets. All are to work together for the common good as God has called them. Luther wrote a small catechism and also went into more details on the catechism, the creed, the, the Lord's Prayer, etc., in a large catechism. It's many more pages. In the large catechism on the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me, here's a portion of what Luther writes. Let us therefore learn the first commandment well and realize that God will tolerate no trust in any other object. God makes no greater demand of us than a hearty trust in God for all our blessings. Then we shall be on the right path and walk straight ahead using all of God's gifts exactly as the cobbler uses his needle, awl, and thread, and he lists several more, or as a traveler avails himself to an inn, food, and bed. Let each person be in their station in life according to God's order, allowing none of these good things to be their Lord or idol. In other words, Luther is saying, if we keep and hoard our gifts, services, and activities for our own gain and reward, then these have become our own idol, our own false god. Yet God wants us to pray about these very gifts, services, and activities as we pray in the Lord's Prayer. In the large catechism, on the fourth petition, Give us this day our daily bread. These are a few of the words that Luther writes on that. Here we consider the poor bread basket, the needs of our body and our life on earth. It is a brief and simple word, but very comprehensive when you pray for daily bread. You pray for everything that is necessary in order to have and enjoy daily bread, and on the contrary, against everything that interferes with enjoying it. To put it briefly, this petition includes everything that belongs to our entire life in this world. Not only food and clothing and other necessities, but also peace and concord. And indeed, the greatest need of all is to pray for our civil authorities and the government, for chiefly through them does God provide us our daily bread and all the comforts of this life, Although we have received from God all good things in abundance, we cannot retain any of them or enjoy them in security and happiness unless God gives us a stable, peaceful government. End of quote. So according to Luther, those who serve in government are to live out a calling from God to use their gifts, services, and abilities for the common good. Now, all political and partisan issues aside, we currently live in what they're calling a cancel culture. One way to describe that is if there's two people having differing opinions on a topic, they remove each other from their social media. They don't want to have to deal with anybody who differs from them. And it's going even further. Or if you disagree with somebody, refuse to have anything to do with them on any level, from one topic even. This unhealthy mindset not only has infected individuals, but also our country politically. This is true to everyone, but especially for healthy congregations and healthy Christians. We have to be able to separate the people from the issues. We are Christians who happen to be Lutheran, and I jokingly say I blame my parents for that, 
But we have to be able to separate the people from the issues. And because we're living in a nation governed by we the people for the people. And we must put aside differences for the sake of the common good. And generally for what is helpful. That's one way to interpret what Paul says in this letter about the common good. See, this is what Paul is addressing in our reading from 1 Corinthians 12. When from the Bible we hear, now there are a variety of gifts, services, and activities, but it is the same God who activates all of these gifts in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. All we do and say is to be done to God's glory and to benefit all people. The church is bigger than this one place. Our personal talents, gifts, and abilities are to be used to benefit all of God's creation. That's why in our proposed Hoover Bequest distribution that you'll see in the annual report when it comes out, that it again includes local, regional, and global ministries and faith-based organizations. We also had to balance the, the stipulations in the, in the bequest and what our Constitution says to who we can give to. But that's why we also pray for daily bread for all people. It's remembering that all good things are a gift from God. We live as disciples of Jesus who commands us to share the gospel, not only through proclamation of the word, but also through our actions. We do this because our calling as a congregation is part of Christ's larger church beyond our so-called membership here. All of our God-given gifts are to proclaim the cross and the empty tomb, where Jesus died for our sins and rose again for all. We invite others to see ordinary water changed by God to become a baptismal covenant. We invite others to break bread and the fruit of the vine, where Jesus changes these to become His body and blood, which then dwells inside of us through Holy Communion. The Spirit sends us forth to serve and to share God's love, grace, and forgiveness. It is God's work, our hands. We all are one in mission. Yet, I have to humbly admit, I do find myself bragging about the good people of St. Matthew's, okay? We are blessed. And how the faithful here do share our gifts of service and activities and our gifts for the mission of Christ's church and for the common good. We think beyond ourselves in our outreach and benevolence beyond our doors. Next Sunday, when you get a chance to pick up a copy of our 2021 annual report, along with the reports from the various groups, my report will speak to how Christ's disciples here are thriving despite all that's been tossed at us, and how we here are sharing the spiritual gifts for the common good, but doing so to God's glory. Thanks be to God. Thank you for living out your calling in all your God-given vocations. Yet we do not do this for our own bragging rights, which in our lesson today is another concern Paul addresses. We are to use our God-given gifts to God's glory, not ours, especially when we quote the Bible at a baptismal service. Listen to these words carefully, because it doesn't say we do these to our glory. It says this, Let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Remember, Paul writes, There are a variety of gifts, services, and activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. All of our daily vocations 
come from God and are to be used for proclaiming and living the good news of Jesus Christ in all that we do and say for the common good. Amen. Please turn to page 10 in the bulletin for our sermon hymn, We All Are One in Mission, and I invite you to stand. We have been made God's people through our baptism into Christ, to living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin of Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. Work through the ministry of your people, especially LRI Lutheran Parish, God of Grace, Hear our prayer. Your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, migrant farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. God of grace, hear our prayer. By your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Direct policymakers towards compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. God of grace. Hear our prayer. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need this day. And we especially pray for Jim, Steve, Peter, Shirley, Judy, Doris, Shirley, Alice, Jane, George, Paul, Fran, Terry, Kathy, Dick, Judy, Josie, Linda, Jennifer, Irma, Porter, Dustin, Dana, Deborah, Nancy, Mona,
Patricia, Deb, Scott, Braden, Kendall, Ruth, Gary, Lisa, Loretta, Jamie, Gail, Elizabeth, Sarah, Anne, Linda, Art, Rita, Beth, Patrick, Debbie, Tim, and all victims of disasters and violence and those impacted by our pandemic in any way. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, all seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. God of grace. You see us for who we are, and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life transition. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. God of grace. Hear our prayer. You bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King, Jr. and all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we now receive our tithes and offerings to give to God and for the work of God's church and mission. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he is betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Communion is by continual flow this morning. Um, the ushers will form a single aisle in the middle. We'll alternate from side to side. We've been asked to make sure to have social distance between each pew, so allow space between you and the people in front of you. Um, come to me for the bread, and then people on this side will go over to Maryland to get the little cup of white grape juice or red wine, put the empty cup in the bowl, and return to your seat. On this side, you come to me for the bread, and Steve will give you the white grape juice or red wine. Come to God's table. There's a place for you and enough for all. Please be seated.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. At this time, Catherine will come forward to share some announcements, and then I'm going to have Nate come forward in a minute, too. So, Catherine. Good morning, everyone. A planning meeting for Bureau County Work Camp 2022 will be held Wednesday, January 19th at 7 p.m. here at St. Matthew's. All are invited to come, check out what this is all about, or if you have experience, come find out how you can help. A kids' night out will take place Tuesday, January 25th from 5.30 until 7.30, hosted by the Youth and Family Committee. Please let me know by January 23rd if your kids plan on attending and their choice of pizza. This event is open to all school-aged children. St. Matthew's annual congregation meeting will be held here Sunday, January 30th at 10.20. Also, annual reports will be available for pickup at St. Matthew's by Sunday, January 23rd. Volunteers are needed to open and close the church. Please take a look at the sign-up sheet outside pastor's office. In-person Sunday school and coffee and fellowship have been temporarily suspended through today. Sunday school will be meeting today by Zoom at 10.30. Please check your email for the link or let me know if you are in need of it or assistance getting connected. And then confirmation is by Google Classroom. That is it. Thank you, guys. And if you would like a any report mailed to you, let Barb know that. We can mail those. Uh, we're not mailing them all this year. We're, we're going back to picking up here. And as Nate is coming forward, I also want to share is we found out Friday that they're going to begin on the restroom project tomorrow. So the orange cones out there are for the dumpster to show up in the morning. They're going to start um, taking some things apart. Um, the issue is we've done, uh, got several things ready for them, but having just found out Friday they're doing this, we have a few things we need last minute to get ready, like there's doors in the Ekdal room and the stuff there that needs to be taken to a storage. I don't know where that storage is going to be. We're going to have a lot of storage issues for a moment. And we have to get all the chairs out of the choir room. And I bought some clingy type um, um, drop cloths that we need to cover all the file cabinets at downstairs in the basement in the choir room. So that all needs to be done today because they're going to start when, when Barb shows up at 830, they'll be waiting on her. So, so that's good news. So, Nate, Nate has some words of um, wisdom from our council. Thank you, Nate. Yeah, good morning. Um, uh, I'm speaking to you on behalf of the, actually the nominating committee today. Um, <clears throat> I've been on the uh, church council for the last two years. And so, as you guys notice, we've got our annual meeting coming up here in a couple weeks. And so we're searching for, um, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Pastor, but I believe uh, at this point we're searching for nominations for vice president and then also one two-year term, one to two, I think, and then three three-year terms to join us on council uh, for the upcoming year. And <clears throat> if I could, I guess, um, if you got some interest, uh, let either myself, Sandy Rose is also on the nominating committee, or Katie Dye uh, let us know. It's actually, I'll be honest, it's been, um, you know, yes, we've had our shared challenges on decision-making with the church, with covid but we have a lot of blessings as pastors alluded to happening in our church right now and so it's been a fun time to make decisions in this church uh with the projects we've got going on with the capital projects and and um you know some of the other uh decisions we have to make with like uh the daisy hoover trust and bequest it's it's a it's a fun time to be a part of it and so we'd love to have you join us Thank you, Nate. And I would add, too, that we have a, one spot for Foundation Committee, too, that's open for a three-year term. And um, we need three adults 
for our Senate Assembly, which is kind of different um, rather than for we're electing a new bishop rather than two and a half days in person. It's going to be a day and an evening with a couple um, Zoom meetings prior to that to make the process work smoother. Um, but we need three adults and, one, and we have the option to have one teenager confirmed or young adults. We can actually have four people besides um, the pastor be part of that process. So they, they're also working on that as well. Um, thank you, everyone. I invite you to stand for the benediction. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending him is the Spirit sends us forth to serve. Christ into a weary world, share the good news.